Hey everyone, Joe at Small Home Off Grid Prepping here. So today we're going to be connecting our um, generator inlet to the panel here. And this is our panel. We have to do a few modifications. Um, before I get into this, two things I want to cover. One, on our last generator video, um, Matthew had made a comment like, uh, wow, your AC only pulls that much amperage. So I told him I'd show him on the amp probe next time we're here. Um, the sun's kind of hitting, but you see here, this right now is connected to my AC unit. The AC unit is at full blast. I put it down to 70 degrees. So the compressor's running, um, the condenser fan is running, the blower motor, this is 100% running right now. And you see we're pulling just over 1.8 amps. And if you remember on my last video about the generators, I explained to you guys, um, amperage and wattage. So you see here, this is the breaker right here for the AC unit. It's a 15 amp breaker. Um, this is a 240 breaker. You see they have a double handle on them where these have single handles on them. These are 120 breakers up inside of here and these are 240 breakers right over here. And you remember I showed you on the uh, last video the hot water heater. These are my three circuits for the hot water heater here. So this one is the AC unit right over here and as you see we're pulling um, 1.87 amps. Okay so that is the entire AC unit is pulling. It'll jump a little bit. It actually comes down to 1.6 normally. Uh, but 1.8, like I said, so if you do the math, 240 um, times 1.8, that is the wattage that these things, this thing is pulling right now. So real quick, let me show you the AC unit. Okay, this is the AC unit. If you've seen any of the pictures of our house um, inside, this is a ducted mini split. And um, it's just a great, great unit. Like I said, it barely pulls electric. These things are fantastic to run on solar. Um, 1.8 amps and like I said that's in a max I just put it down right now so it's just coming out of the start mode um, it's running a little bit harder but like I said when it's running and it's cooled off the house and it's right where it needs to be you're pulling about 1.6 amps on this thing 1.8 isn't much of a difference um, this is the electrical disconnect for it over here the line set that goes up into the attic right over there so we're going to be talking more about the AC unit um, guys subscribe hit the notification button our next video is going to be covering shelter um, when we're talking about the four elements of survival and this is a big thing right here the AC unit so we're going to be getting into uh, detail about this here so but like I said for today we are installing our generator inlet um, so let's go back to that and I'll explain that to you guys okay so yeah I, I covered Matthew's uh, question over here we are pulling 1.8 amps it's still well it turned off right now it goes off by itself in a minute um, the thing is guys I'm gonna start getting more into electric but this electric stuff here I'm gonna get more into technical things here but these videos are for educational and entertainment purposes only the fact is there is no such thing as a DIY electrician if you are not an experienced electrician um, you're just putting your life and your family's life on the line by trying to do electric yourself so these are for educational entertainment purposes this is so you guys know when you do call an electrician out to your house to do something this is what he's supposed to do it's not intended for you guys to do this yourself um, I'll tell you a real quick story here, which is a very serious story. Happened in my area four or five years ago in that area, um, somewhere around there. A young couple had just gotten married. They were 20 years old, and one of the parents had bought them a house uh, as a wedding gift, and the other set of parents was remodeling the house. So they started with the appliances in the kitchen, and they went to our local whatever store, and they bought, you know, microwave, stove, refrigerator, dishwasher, and the um, young guy he changed his microwave he put in his fridge all that was pretty simple but now it came time to change the dishwasher and he went over to his panel and you see down here this is what's called a dead front all right and i'm not sure how the sun is affecting this on my end it kind of looks a little blurred but um this is called a dead front and you see this is where all your breakers and circuits are marked over here this is an outdoor panel so the humidity as you see kind of messes up the stickers a little bit here um, I change mine about once a year and update them. This one I'm going to have to update because we have to modify this panel. I'll explain that in a second. But um, anyways, he went over to what was marked dishwasher. And you see here on mine, this is dishwasher. And mine is correct. I marked it myself. <clears throat> so anyways, he turns off the breaker. Now, the dishwasher was, it was what it's called hardwired, okay? Nowadays, you have a plug underneath the sink. This one was hardwired. And he had no way to really tell if the power was on or off. So as he started to pull out the dishwasher, the wire had gotten tight in the back. Okay, it came almost all the way out. It was a few inches away, and he couldn't figure out what was going on. So he literally reached his hand around the back of the dishwasher. Now when it had pulled, the electrician who installed it years and years and years ago didn't do it correct. And as soon as it put tension on the wire, it pulled the wire off of where it was connected in the dishwasher. He reached his hand around, and the wire hit his wedding ring and electrocuted him and killed him right in front of his new wife. Two weeks they were married. So the fact is, guys, if you don't know electric, you don't do electric, okay? The only exception I'm going to give you to that as we get into this is, in electric, there's two words you need to remember. 
you need to remember rough and trim okay rough basically is if you're gonna bury pipes in the ground and you're gonna run you know um, pull things to the panel and things like that in this case we're putting this in there is nothing you guys can do because you have to work inside of a panel okay and if you're working inside of a panel you have to be an electrician it's that simple but if you want to run an outlet to your I don't know 50 60 feet away from your house and you want to have a light out there in an outlet yeah that's fine you can go ahead you can bury the pipe in the ground you can pull the wire okay that is called rough but now when it comes time to connect that outlet connect that receptacle and connect to the panel that is called trim okay and that is something only an electrician does so if you do your rough you're most likely gonna have to be pulling the permit anyways especially as a homeowner and then an electrician a certified electrician will be coming out looking at what you did and making the electrical connections then an inspector comes out and the inspector makes sure everything was done correctly to code so like I said rough is about the only thing as a DIY you can do but you can never touch electric whatsoever so again um, my disclosure these are intended for entertainment educational purposes only so you know what an electrician should be doing when he comes out to the house so that aside okay first thing I need to do to my panel is these breakers on the top over here because I'm putting in this uh, generator inlet I need to relocate these so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the stove one here I'm gonna relocate it down to here and then drop these ones down okay um, take these two over here and put them where the stove is compared to dropping all these that'd be too much work so I'm gonna take these two and I'm gonna put them over here um, and and then I'll show you how the um, generator connects now the reason we're doing that though is this is what's called an interlock okay the interlock when we're done is going to go i believe it goes like this yeah it's going to mount up here okay now what this interlock does is it will connect to the generator breaker which will be here and the main breaker and this is how you have to do this legally per code um it prevents you from ever having the generator turned on and having the utility power the power company's power at the same time so <clears throat> Like I said, first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to relocate these breakers here. Um, and then once I do that, I'm going to come back and I'm going to get a little more into detail what we're going to be doing here. This is called the generator inlet right over here. And this is going to be mounting on the wall. Get some camera. Uh, somewhere in this area right about over here, we're going to be mounting this. So once I get these breakers moved, I'm going to be coming back and then um, we'll go from there. Alright, so I've taken these out. I'm going to move these down. Like I said here, this is the stove breaker. I have to shorten these wires over here to move this over to here. Um, but these are what's called arc fault breakers. And if you know anything about electric, usually on a normal breaker like these two over here, these two aren't required to be arc fault protected. You only have the hot coming in here, then the neutral just goes to the neutral bar right over there. These ones, the neutral comes into the breaker itself. Um, and then this connects to the neutral bar itself. They're called arc fault. What they do is within a circuit, they will sense, mi uh, sense microscopic arcing. Microscopic arcing is caused by loose connections, stuff like that. If you have too loose of a connection, it creates an air gap and you have microscopic arcing, which eventually could cause a fire um, or bor burn up the device. So these are called arc faults. So these will sense that um, and it will actually trip before that happens. So we're going to go ahead and move these. But what we need to do is you see, I have to extend these wires here. These wires are too short. So I have to extend these. So let me show you how we're going to do that. So, yeah, that one is going to fit fine in the neutral. That one's fine, too. It's going to connect to the neutral. All right, so we're going to do these one at a time simply so we don't mix up the hot and the neutral. Black being hot and white being neutral. If I took all of these off here, um, I'm not going to remember which one. The neutral and the hot does have to stay together on each separate one here, so I'd have to actually trace it back to where it's coming in. So I'm going to do these one at a time here. And what you're going to do to extend your wires okay and if an electrician comes out to do this this is how they have to do it right? if you see somebody put two wires together and just take a wire nut like if they were to just put two wires together like this here okay and take a wire nut and screw it down throw them out of your house he's not an electrician he don't know what he's doing um, these things have to be wrapped together so I'm going to show you how I do that you also have to use the right wire inside of the panel okay this is called Romax. This is made for going inside of walls, for attics, stuff like that. Um, it's insulated. Once you come in the panel, you have to strip the insulation out. Okay, uh, But this is the kind of wire that you have to use to modify your panel like this. So I have a piece I've already taken out here, and we're going to strip this. And I'm going to give myself a good little amount right over here. Because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these two together like this. And I'm not going to line my ends up here. I'm going to line my insulation up over here. You see, one's a little bit longer than the other one is here. And then I'm just going to take these, take my linesman's pliers here, go right about there, and just twist. Give the 
in the cut so it's nice and even and that is how you put it together just like that you twist them you don't just put them together they have to be twisted together and from there that's when you take your wire nut and you put your wire nut on okay of course going in the same direction so when you twist it you want it to be twisted this way and you want the wire nut to be going that way as well and then you're just going to kind of tuck this in. I am going to put these behind here. Let me measure out my wire. Okay, so. See here, I'm not sure if you guys can see, but none of my wires have a complete, they're kind of like sweep, okay? They don't have a complete bend. Um, you don't want to do that. You don't want to take a wire, okay, and literally just bend it like that. You're going to create too much resistance as the electricity travels through here. You want to sweep it, okay? You want a nice round sweep just like that over there. That creates less resistance. So you see here, I got a nice little sweep going over here on mine. So now I'm going to extend a neutral. doing the same thing. I'm going to line up my insulation over there. Put my lines and pliers on this and I'm going to twist them. Okay. Now we just clip the end like so and we're ready to put a wire nut on it. Alright, so now I have the hot and the neutral right where they need to be for here. So let's put that in. Now you see on these breakers here neutral okay you see neutral is marked right over here so the white one is going to go for neutral right here the black one is going to go right over here and then this will connect to what's called the bar the grounding bar neutral bar We're just going to give that a tiny little clip here. Thank you. 
adjustments over here to clean this up a little bit nicer, make it look a little better. There we go. Alright, so that one is done. We got this one in, it's connected. Um, it's working fine. I hit the reset button, the trip button. It's working just fine. So now we're going to do this one over here. Okay, so I'm not going to reuse this breaker here because this pigtail is going to be too short to make it up where it needs to go. Um, I probably could move this ground over here and get a space. I'm just going to use a new one over here. I have a bunch of these. So I'm just going to take a new one and then I'll cut the pigtail to the right size that I want. Okay, so we have those two moved and same thing, they're both working fine. That power gun through them, so we have to do this one over here. But you see now I created a space up here um, where the generator breaker will go. And this is going to be the generator breaker and that will just go in just like this here. It's a little tight, but it um, goes in just like that over there. So that's our generator breaker now. And then like I said, the inner lock um, goes on the dead front of the panel. But that will attach to the main breaker up over here as well. It actually goes like over here. And you can already see how this thing works. Is You actually have to turn the main off. And when you turn the main off, this channel here will slide up. And when it slides up, this handle, this piece right over here will allow you to turn on that breaker here. Okay, But this has to be off in order to do that. So we'll get to that you know, when we're ready to put this in. All right, so now let's just move this quick here and I'm ready to put the inlet in. So we got everything moved. We have our generator breaker up here. Um, moved our stove down to here and move these two circuits down over here. Now what I'm going to have to do though, and this is how this kid got himself electrocuted. Um, somebody had done that as time went by over the years. I, what was now, um, this was the washer and living room. Um, so what was the washer and living room, which is really just the washer outlet. We have a separate um, place we keep our washer and dryer. Um, so, but it was an outlet, it's code that you do have to have the washer and dry or washer hookup inside of your house here. So that's what that washer breaker was. Um, and then the other one's a general living room over here, but that's not the case anymore. Now I've moved those down to here. Okay. So now this one would be what was the washer outlet. And then this one is going to be the general uh, living room over here. So it's not marked correctly on the panel. So I'm going to have to make that adjustment and fix this on the panel and then mark this as the generator breaker as well. And that's what happened to this kid. He turned off what he thought was a dishwasher. It wasn't the dishwasher because somebody had done what I just did here over the years. And now it didn't match up. So it is a code that you do have to have your panel labeled correctly. So 
Um, good idea to actually go through your panel and check it yourself, make sure, or pay an electrician to come out and do it for you. So anyways, like I said, now we're going to put in the um, uh, generator inlay here. So, Okay, so we've made the panel modifications that we need to make, and now we're going to install the generator inlet. Um, <clears throat> this is what the inlet looks like right over here. And there'll be a cord that will plug into the generator and then plug into this as well. So I'm going to go ahead and mount this on the wall over here. Now, <clears throat> as far as piping this in, um, you have a couple options here. So when your electrician comes out, um, I'm doing hard piping. I prefer hard piping. This is called flex right over here. This could mount just like that over there. What I don't like about flex is you see here, this is a piece I've been storing in my shed here. I actually have a whole roll of this here. And just from humidity, whatever, this stuff turns black and gets dirty, and I just don't like that on my house. So it is acceptable per code, though. So if an electrician comes out um, to put in your inlet, don't start bugging out on him if, if he does it that way. It's the code. It's correct. If you want it done this way, which is what I'm doing, then just request you want everything hard pipe. This is called an LB over here. Um, so what we're going to do is this will actually mount up underneath here, and then our receptacle, this connects into our generator inlet right over here like that as well. So let's go ahead and get this thing mounted. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be doing is this will come up underneath from the bottom right here. This is called a knockout, okay? And what I'm going to do exactly, I'm going to knock out this hole here, but this hole here would be a half inch. You see this ring around here, that makes it a three quarter. So we're going to go ahead and knock out the entire ring before we put it in. If you were to mount this on your wall and then try to knock this out, you're going to loosen up your screws and you're going to mess this up. So you always do your knockouts first. Okay, so yeah, now you see we have the knockout over here, and then this, take the bushing off real quick here, um, opposite end, but doesn't matter. This is called an MA on the end over here, which is a male adapter, okay? Um, this is going to be glued on, I will glue this on here, but this will actually come right up into the bottom through this right over here, okay? And then there's a nut on here, and then this is what's called a bushing, um, which basically prevents chafing. If you pull the wire through, it'll prevent the wire from scraping along the edge right along over here, and that is a code. Um, so let's go ahead and do a knockout on the panel. Okay, and that's it. Knockout is gone. So now we're going to take this and we're just going to put this up inside of that just like that. But we're going to run the wire through that first. Okay, so we got all the wires pulled through here. So now what we're going to do is feed these wires up through this knockout over here through the hole. Coming up into the panel. Okay, so now we're going to put our lock nut on to lock all that in place. Now, our inlet is up same thing through here, our wires through, and this will mount just like this here. We're going to put a level on it, but that's how that's going to mount, right over here. Let me grab a level quick. Alright, let's go ahead and mount this.
we'll double check that again and see we're off a little bit here so we'll turn that just like that all right so now we're perfectly leveled and now we'll put one of the bottom screws in here <laughs> Okay, so first we're going to come up, we're going to connect the neutral to the neutral bar, right up over here. So I'm going to stretch that up. So next we're going to pull up the two hots, which are the two power wires that will feed. And those are what connect to the breaker right over here, those are the two power wires. So we're going to feed those up. We're going to cut those first to make it a little easier. And I'll show you the difference. When I extended the wires before, okay, I told you guys you have to use Romax, and this is Romax. Um, in the jacket, this is Romax stripped out, but you see the difference here. I'll strip this piece and I'll show you guys the difference in the end. Well, actually, here's a piece right here because it's was... all right. So, you see how this is stranded? This is THWN, okay? THWN is what you put in pipe, um, it's made for outdoor wet locations. Even when you run wire in pipe, it is going to get wet, okay? The pipe will condensate, it will fill up with water, it will get wet. Um, this is made to sit in that wire to, for, you know, to be that way. Um, Romax is not. Romax is made to go inside of your house, in the walls, through the attic. And these are codes that you have to use the correct wire for the correct application. So here we're using THHN because we piped it and this is, is a wet location. Now, if you guys notice, you may or may not have, I'm counting clicks on this. Um, wires where they attach, whether it's a outlet, receptacle, switch, breaker, there is a torque specification. You can't just take a screwdriver, tighten it as tight as you want, or too loose, too tight, you'll crush the wire. Um, you'll flatten the wire, you'll crush it, you'll change resistance in there. Too loose, you create what's called microscopic arcing. Uh, microscopic arcing will ignite the oxygen around it, it builds up carbon, and eventually it will ignite. So there is a torque specification for anything that you're doing, and when an electrician comes out to your house, ask him, what are you torquing that to? Um, I've used this thing for years here, so I know how to count clicks and know exactly what I'm torquing it to. Same thing on this here, which I don't use this one, but this one here, you have the um, little numbers, 10, 12, 14. Each one of these indicates a torque specification, okay? And if you know that, what it is, then you can just set your drill to that torque, and that is what your device will be torqued to. In my case, like I said, I know how to count clicks on this, and I know what my torque is. Um, electricians that aren't experienced enough to do stuff like that, they have to use a torque screwdriver or a torque wrench and actually set it to that specification and torque it correctly. Okay. 
All right, so we have the two hops, we have the neutral connected, and now we're just going to come up and land the ground. <laughs> and for anybody who is an electrician here, um, uh, you can't see it probably, this is in the way here, but you notice the bonding screw is not in here, the panel is not bonded, the grounds and neutrals are not bonded together. Um, this actually is a 200 amp main breaker panel, but this is a sub panel. There's another 200 amp panel about 120 feet away. Um, I built on a pedestal with a meter cam and the feeders come up through this pipe right down over here and these are the feeders that feed that 200 amp panel. These are four out feeders, um, which means these are 200 amp feeders over here. So this actually is a sub panel. Um, not a main panel, even though it has a main breaker, which means your grounds and your neutrals have to be separated. They cannot be bonded together. So let's go ahead and let's get our ground up over here to the grounding bar. I'm going to use this one. I have two grounding bars. I have one on this side here, but it's pretty full. Um, let's move some stuff over here. Yeah, I think I'll land down on the bottom over here. I got some space on the bottom of the grounding bar here, so I think I'll just feed this up and land it into there, like that. Alright, so we're going to take this out. and It doesn't want to move up to the next one, but the head on this one for some reason is not grabbing. Um, yeah, it seems to be stripped a little bit, so I'm just going to go ahead and replace that and put a different one in. Okay, so that's good now. We got that in. So um, that is your panel part. That is all. Make everything nice and neat. Put it back in here. Okay, so that is all connected here. Generator breaker is in. Um, and now we just have to connect this over here, um, put in our interlock kit, and this thing is ready to run our generator on the house. But let's go ahead and connect these over here. <laughs> now, per code, um, you guys notice I'm using blue. That's because I had blue. Um, <clears throat> to identify hot wires, you can use black, you can use red, you can use um, blue is sufficient. There's a lot of different colors per code that you can use to identify the wires that you're working on. So let's go ahead and put the ground in here. All right, so let's put our lock nut on here. Get all this lock into place before we connect our wires. Okay, so lock nuts on, I'm going to put our bushing in. Okay. Alright, lock nut and bushing in. So let's connect our ground over here. It's in good. Okay, so we've got the bushing in, lock nut in, ground connected. <clears throat> so now we're going to connect the neutral and the hots. And I don't think you guys can see this here. Your electrician will know this. These are marked W and X indicate hot, Y um, 
indicates a neutral. There's a you can tell. So we're gonna have to take this out actually. Yeah, alright, so they have this nut over here, the screw for this here. The plate's in a way we won't be able to get to that, so we're just gonna take these screws out right over here. this out now and I can show you guys another if you notice here I don't know if the camera can see this this screw here is gold this screw here is silver this screw here is gold gold indicates hots okay silver indicates a neutral um, whether it's a receptacle switches stuff like that you'll notice that there's a gold screw and a silver screw um, that's how you tell your hots if it's not marked and you can't tell your hots will be the gold screws and your neutral is going to be the silver screw now we're going to pull these wires through to make this easy. We're just going to put this back together here. Okay, so let's loosen up the screw down here. hanging out over here. So we got that all screwed back in here. So normally this will just sit just like this over here. This just covers it up, um, and that's it. It keeps it weatherproof. When you want to run a generator, you just pull this out here, and there is a cord, which when we're finished, I'll hook all this up. I'll run it for you, and I'll show you how everything works here. But there's a cord that will plug into this here, um, and then plugs into the generator itself. So we got the generator inlet in. Uh, panel modifications have been done. So let's go ahead and check some voltage here. Let's see what's going on. So let's turn on the generator inlet here. Let's get some readings. Let's see what's going on. Okay, so we are reading 117.1 between uh, L1 and ground. 117.4 between L1 and neutral. One seventeen between neutral and L2. And let's check L2 and L1. Okay, alright. So we're reading 238. So um Good. Everything's all connected real nice. Everything's good here. So turn the breaker back off here. Um, panel modifications are done. Breaker's in for the inlet. Inlet is installed. Um, so this is all pretty well ready to go here. Okay, so next what we're going to be doing here is the electrical part is done. Okay, inlet is in. Panel part's done. This is all connected over here. So now we need to install the interlock kit. And we have a generator cord here 
And this is a cord that I built. This is called a SOW cord, which means it's made to get wet. Um, you see this end I've already put on. This is the end that will plug in the generator. If you notice, it looks almost identical to this end over here, the two of them. Um, in fact, they are identical. This end here, I haven't finished yet. This end here, um, I've already cut this back here. So I'll go ahead and strip this. I'll put the end on here. And let me show you what that end looks like real quick. Okay, so this is what the end looks like right here. This is a female plug here. Now, there's a reason for that, all right? We call these death cords. Um, you, you see people rig this up, okay? I hope you guys aren't one of them if you're watching this. Um, they'll take like a stove receptacle and put it on one end and a stove receptacle put it on the other end. Now, the problem is if you have what's called a male plug on each end, which this is a male, the prongs come out. If I plug this in my generator, now look at all these pieces of live metal sticking out, okay? It touches the ground, it touches water, um, it electrocutes you. You grab it by mistake, it electrocutes you. So this is a female end right over here. This is safe. This is the male end inside of here. And all this does is this will plug into, goes this way. When you want to connect it, that plugs in just like that over there. And the cord, of course, will be connected to that. So. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish putting this cord together. Once we get the cord together, um, then I'm going to go ahead and fire this thing up and you know uh, run it, show you how everything works, this and that, and then we'll put the interlock in from there. So when I get the cord together, I'll be back. All right, so we're back. Uh, as you guys can hear, the generator's running. Uh, generator breaker is turned off. Power is completely dead over here. You can see there is nothing live in the panel whatsoever. However, when we go to check the power coming into the breaker, you guys here. I don't know if you can see that or not. We are reading 240.08. Okay, so we have power coming in. So now we're going to turn on the generator breaker. You heard it bog down a little bit here. Um, yeah. Alright, so now check our bus bar over here. Okay, and as you guys see, checking the bus bar, we have 240. Um, bolts coming into there. We are plugged in right over here. So the house has power. Main breaker is turned off right now simulating the power loss. Um, you see that everything is live. When you check on the individual breakers, let's go to the neutral bar over here and let's check the breaker over here. And we are reading 120. Yep. Okay, so we're reading 120 over here. Uh, uh, okay, so now if you check individual legs. I don't know if you guys can see this here, but this is a 240 breaker. If I check this neutral right here, I'm reading 120. Um, try to figure out how to show you guys this. this is a little difficult. Here, let's do this. Okay, so now we can see the meter a little bit better. Um, main breaker is turned off, so we have no power coming in from the power company. We're strictly on generator power right now. And as you see here, we're going to check the bus bar. Okay, again, you're reading 240, like I said over here. So um, we're powered up. You see, this is the generator inlet right there. This is the cord that plugs in right over here. And we come around over here. And this is the generator running a little bit loud, but it plugs in right over here. You see it's saying 120, 240. This is a 120, 30, and these are just your regulars down over here. So this is the one that plugs in right over here. Um, and that's it, we have power. So that's how you connect the generator to your entire house legally. Um, per code, per National Electric Code. The interlock, we're running out of time. It's starting to get a little bit dark right now. Um, but the interlock, I'll put in in a different video for you guys and show. We'll just do a quick one showing you guys how I install the interlock. But even when you check your 120s over here, this is the neutral bar. So let's go hot over here, neutral over here. And you see on the meter, we're reading 120. Well, it went off. These things turn off and reset themselves pretty quick here. Okay, so. Alright, so again. That. And we connect to the neutral bar here. Okay. And we are reading 
118.4, 118.5, which is good. That's fine. However, when we come up here and check our main coming in here, you guys are a little far and wide apart. Okay. You see here, we're reading 249 coming into the main. Oh, that is coming from the power company, okay, from my other panel. You see here, when I turn off the generator breaker, okay, now we're going to check the bus bar again, and you see there's, there's nothing. Okay. You see here, we're reading zero. There's absolutely nothing. Um, I can touch this. I'm not getting electrocuted right now. Uh, so, that's it. That's how we put in our generator inlet. We connect it legally per code. And again, like I said, we have to put the interlock in. We're just running out of time today. But um, that's it, guys. So that's how we do it. Any questions, like, comment, subscribe. We are going to be covering, like I said, um, I'm going to be covering the air conditioner and, and the four elements of survival we're covering shelter. And I'm going to show you how you can actually take this setup no matter what. Doesn't matter how big a house you have, okay? You can take this setup and you can run your entire house. You can run the lights in your house. You can run what you need. You can create that sanctuary area where you have air conditioning or heat in a certain area. You run your refrigerator. So we're going to be covering that. That'll be coming out um, fairly quick. And like I said, when I do put in the interlock, I'll show you guys that as well. So anyways, guys, have a great day. We will see you on the next one.